Empty now, sir. Empty. Almost. After three train sick children and a dog, anything's an improvement. It's against regulations to bring animals into compartments, sir. You know what children are. What can you do about it? I didn't mind the dog. <laughs> How do we get to Verbach? Oh, in about an hour, sir. Lemons past twelve. Thank you. Ah, thanks. Thank the next station. Oh, what's this then? What time is the next train? Tomorrow. Can I get a car? Not here. It's a nice walk. How far? About 12 kilometers. <sighs> Any other suggestions? Yeah, it's bad for me. Uh, just a minute. 
How far is it to La Rivaudière? I thought to get was to Burbank. Yeah, but I want to go to La Rivaudière to fish. Oh, well, it's not so bad. There's, uh, it's about three or four kilometers. Uh, yeah. Take this road, turn off left. There's a path through the woods. Well, uh, look after my back for me, will you? Thank <laughs> you, yes, sir. Where are you? Here. I'm here. What was the shot? Come closer. I can't see you. I'm here. I'm coming. We've caught the creature at last, have we? I knew those patrols of mine would succeed in the end.
Ah, Monsieur Drevet. Well done, Fouché. Where is he? Dr. Rivo still got him in there. Yes. Socks. Gray socks. Gray socks. Think I asked. Yes. I'm going to operate at once now. Sure. Take him to the theater. Oh, Ah, doctor, at last. Now, wait a minute. Well, will he live? Yes, I suppose so. Good, until we lop off his head. Can you hear me? I'm the mayor of Vervec. You will be charged with serious offences. Yes, and molesting women to rape and homicide. That's enough. What's he saying? It sounded like Georges Le Duc. Yeah, yeah, he would, yeah. Sister, you can have him later. He would, yeah. La Rivaudier. I ran into Georges Le Duc yesterday. He told me he was expecting a visitor on the Paris train. That's right, he told me that too. Did he tell you it was his old boss, Maigret? <laughs> What about your patrols now, eh? An understandable mistake. <laughs> I don't think I like my guests being taken for the local madman and shot up. Good day, Monsieur Le Duc. <laughs> I'd better go and see how he is. Thousand francs. Identity card pipe. There you are, you horrible maniac. It's all there. Tobacco and matches? Your tobacco's in a safe place where you can't get at it. You didn't have any matches. I did have some matches. Ah, Jules. My old friend. They sent for me yesterday, but you were still under anaesthetic. Monsieur Le Duc, no visitors. Oh, you know this old rascal. Eh? I often come into Vervac for a good meal and civilization. Now, now, <laughs> Monsieur Le Duc. You can have five minutes. Uh, I picked up your bag. Did they find everything? Yeah, but she's hiding my tobacco. Oh, well, here you are. Ah. And I brought you something to read as well. Good. Now then, what happened? Well, like a fool, I got out of the train at station too early and, uh, well, I decided to walk. Took a shortcut through the wood. And then? Heard some rustling, someone talking, and then this happened. Fouché's patrols. Uh. Trigger happy. Mm -hmm. A girl was killed, you know. When was this? A month ago, but it started nearly a year back. Girls molested, mm. all after dark. Any description? None of them saw him, except the last one, perhaps. How are they armed? The girl who died. Oh, how are they armed, these patrols? Regulation issue. Well, uh, the bullet they got out of me was a 792. A 792? Well, yeah. that isn't regulation. Yeah. Madman with a gun, nice combination. <laughs> mm. Good morning, Jacques. Good morning and goodbye. <laughs> I go. Ah. How are you feeling this morning? Oh, not too bad. Did anyone get through to my wife in Alsace? You can expect her tomorrow evening. Good. We booked a single room at the Angleterre. Ah, I'll make it a double room. Feel much better. Yes, yeah, well, we'll see about that. Well, well old friend, the fish will have to wait, eh? <laughs> Seems we have bigger game. Inspector Fouché, hmm? when was the first attack? Uh, last year, in July, the girl Moroi. And the second? January. Mm. That was Garamond, then it was Cécile Vernon in April, and Valérie Ducot in May. Six months, three months, a month. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> I don't get the point. Don't you, Fouché? It means that the intervals are shortening, that our maniac is losing control. And now he's homicidal, and he's got a gun. Look, um... Can you remember no detail whatsoever before you were shot? Was it a railway carriage? There was a sleeping man? That's all. Sorry. 
With all my regard for the superior talent of the Paris police, I must say Inspector that... Maigret is with us purely in the capacity of victim, Fouché. Jacques! Mm. How long will it be, huh? A week in bed, two months on sick leave, catching fish single-handed. Oh. Ah. Sure, oh, my poor fool. I'm so sorry. Are you really all right? Yes, of course, my dear. What's your bed doing out here? Well, I want to look out the window. Look, I wasn't expecting oh. you until this evening. They sent a squad car and another one across Paris. Lucky mm -hmm. thing being married to a policeman, eh? Hey? <laughs> oh, George, how good to see you. This is uh, Monsieur Drevet, the mayor. Oh. And uh, Inspector Fouché, chief of police. Madame. Madame, if you excuse me, my office calls. Monsieur. Look in any time, Fouché. Hmm? I may remember something. I'm sure you're huh? not allowed to smoke it. Your room is already ready. Oh, thank you. What have you been giving him to eat? Kidneys uh, in wine. Gaston, they were excellent. Oh, thank you very much, monsieur. <laughs> Tonight, uh, there will be duck with oranges. There ah. will not be duck with oranges. Very good, madame. What sort of a doctor have you got? Meet him, my dear. Dr. Riveau, the man who saved my life. Madame. Monsieur, haven't you ordered him an invalid diet? Naturally, but it varies with the invalid. Good job I came. Well, I see that I leave you in good hands. Don't let Fouché disturb you a touch of provincial peak. Ah. I'll tell him you have no intention of intervening. You coming, Rivo? Yes. Madame. I'll call again after surgery. Try to rest. Avoid using the brain too much. Hmm? It might start up the fever again. It's the only sensible thing that doctor said. He's a very good doctor. He studied under Martel. Who's Martel? Uh, famous. Your wife doesn't seem to want to know that Martel was just about the finest surgeon ever. Everyone seems very concerned to keep me quiet. Doesn't the victim any rights? When did the victim ever have any rights? <laughs> Rooms aren't at all clean. George, must you smoke? You know what he's like. What? George, yeah. I want you to do something for me. Hmm. Get me some books. Ah, about fish? No, criminal insanity. You'd better take Revo's advice and stick to thinking about fish. You too. George is quite right. I'll see if the hotel can get you a trout for tonight. Hmm. George, you must let him rest now. Uh, of course, of course. Au revoir, old friend. I'll see what I can do, huh? Good. George. Come whenever you like, but I shall have to ask you not to smoke. Of course, of course. Au revoir, madame. Au revoir, George. Well, that won't be needed now. What have you got there? There's something that was missing. Now it's turned up. So long as it's turned up. Here. Call from Paris for you, Monsieur. A moment. Ah, uh, Lucas. Uh, Bertrand. How are you feeling now? Ah, <laughs> good, good. We've had some tender inquiries from some of your uh, clients. No, no, they were hoping to subscribe for a reef. <laughs> Is there anything you want? Yeah. I want you uh, to see what you can find out about Dr. Jacques Rivo, studied under Martel. Uh, yes, I've got that. And Louis Drevet. D-R-E-V-E-T, -E the mayor. And Inspector Fouché, his chief of police. Chief of police? You get me sacked. Uh, what? Well, not our old Georges Leduc. Yeah, and there's one more, Gaston Duport, hotel owner. Monsieur Duport? I have a trout for Monsieur Maigret. I want it poached in milk with nutmeg and very little butter. Very good, madame. Hello? 
Hello, this is Dupont, Gaston Dupont, Hotel d'Angleterre. I want to speak to Inspector Fouché. Well, that's all, Luca. As soon as you can. Goodbye. to a nice trout for tonight. Soon. Mm. My old uh, Georges Le Duc looked in. Left me some reading matter. Oh. <laughs> I specially asked him not to smoke. What have you been reading? The psychopathology? No criminal insanity. Oh, I wish you wouldn't. This was supposed to be a holiday. Oh. Have you ever thought why old Georges Le Duc retired from the police so early? Hmm? He had a nervous breakdown. He spent two years in that sanatorium, and then he retired out here and lives alone in that cottage of his. Why are you saying this? Well, do you see this? I picked it up in a railway carriage. Well? Well, I didn't have it in the hospital, so I must have dropped it in the forest. What's this to do with George? Well, yesterday I had four visitors, all of them smokers. Any one of them might have brought that into this room. But in fact, I saw George the Duke using it. He used the last match. Well, he, he might have found it here. He might. Oh, sure. George is your best friend. Yeah, that's why you've got to help me. Well, what can I do? Until I'm better. You'll have to be my eyes and my ears. I want you to look around the town, get the smell of the place. Find out what sort of a house Turbe lives in. Hmm? What sort of a practice Rivo has. What they think of Fouché. Huh? Go now, sip drinks in the cafe. Well, you can go in the cake shops and hear the gossip. You only hmm? want to get rid of me so that you can smoke. Hmm. Tobacco. Oh, uh, there. Can you tell me which is Monsieur Trebe's house? Oh, yes, madame. It's just down there on the other side. Thank you very much. to see why you don't see it in the same light. I'm sorry, Fouché, but there's nothing I can do. If you will take no action, Monsieur Dervais, I shall appeal. I shall appeal to the Ministry. And be told that you're lucky to have the advice of a man like advice? me. Advice? Do you realise he's making inquiries about me? And about you, and about Rivo? I don't see how you can stop him. Don't you? There are more ways than one of putting an end to such interference. You're not in Madagascar now. A fact I regret as much as you. Very well, Monsieur Trevet. Francois. Louis, how much does Maigret know? Don't worry. He can do nothing. He'll be tied to his bed for a fortnight, and by that time. 
Don't worry. Bareback, two, three. Dr. Rebo. Jacques, I must see you. There's something I must tell you. Meet me by the wall, you know. I can't now. Later, later. Now, Jacques, now it's terribly important. All right, I'll come at once. Who was it? A patient. I have to go. No, wait. Don't go. Well? Nothing. He said. Oh, I feel so stupid. He, he may have gone to see my husband, but I was passing. I'm Madame Maigret. Maigret? You have a message for my husband? Your. Y yes, it was about the sleeping pills. I, I, I wondered if. You are surprised that I am his wife? No. No. He is older than you think, much older. You have lived as I have lived, son. Please forgive me. I, I, I shouldn't have disturbed you. I, I'll telephone. Yes, telephone. What is it? What did you want to tell me? It's very great, darling. He's dangerous. He's desperately dangerous to us. But why? Oh, how should I know why? He's a devil. He's clever and subtle. Don't you realize what he is? He's, he's Maigret and he's here. I'm so frightened. You must pull yourself together. I hate him. I hate him. Why did you let him live? Francoise. He's trying to destroy us. He's asking questions. 
He suspects us. I know it. That's second nature to Maigret. What can he do from his bed? There's something I could do. Francoise, don't be foolish. There's nothing you can do now to help. We've done everything that we think is best. Please don't do anything silly. I only know that if anything happened to you, I couldn't bear it. I must get back. I'll be missed. Bless you, my darling. I love you. I love you. You get back, all right? Yes. Then on my way back, I dropped into the cake shop just to hear the talk, you know. They say that she has a younger sister living with her. Her name's uh, Francoise. Francoise what? Beausoleil. She works for Monsieur Trevet. People say that she and Monsieur Trevet, well... Francoise and the mayor. Well, that's what they say. The doctor had a practice in Algiers, and the two girls have a mother living in Bordeaux. She lets rooms. Of course, it's only tea shop gossip. Well done, there. Yeah. Well done. Oh, Madame. good evening, doctor. How is he this evening? He was feverish again last night. Maybe it's something he's been reading. You can double the dose if you like. The pills are quite harmless. It was him! What is it? In the wood! What is it? In the wood, Monsieur Dreve asked me to take a message. It was horrible. Come and sit down. Horrible. Come on. Monsieur Dreve asked me to take a message. I'll get some wife. water. I went there. You shouldn't have done that. Dreve had no right to ask you. I was going along. Suddenly he, he jumped out at me. I, I hit him, but he came at me again. You saw him? He was. A thick set, like a forester, and his eyes. Thank you, madam. Yes. Oh, drink Child, this. I'll get her a coat. I have one in the car. I'll take her home immediately. Come. How did you get here? Must you question her now? Well, a, a car was passing. I screamed. I think that's why he ran away. I knew you'd be here. Thank you, madame. I'll send a nurse to change the dressings. Better tell Fouché about this. Oh, yes, of course. We got his thermometer. Poor girl, how awful. You mean because the maniac is still alive or because she had to come through the streets of the town with her clothes half off? Hello. Lucas? Bravo, you've been quick. Thank you, patron. We try to be of uh, good service. Fine. Well, what about Rivo? Uh, complete blank. Martel had no student of that name. There was a Jules Rivo, but he qualified in 1880. No, uh, this one worked in Algiers. Mm, that might help. He may have a foreign degree. No. Not if he studied under Martel. Unless, of course, he changed his name. Mm, a bit difficult to check. Uh, number two, Fouché. Now, he was in police administration in Madagascar, but he enjoyed interrogating the native girls too much and was sent home. He's unmarried. Number three, Dreve. Uh, nothing at all on him. He's also unmarried. He used to pay regular weekly visits to Bordeaux, but he's uh, given that up. Too old, I suppose, like me. Uh, that's what they say in the cake shops. Uh, Luca, I... Luca! Hello. Dupont. What's happened? Fouché's happened, if you ask me. Well, that thing's not going to be much use for no one. I shouldn't say this, but I'm not sorry. I'm sure all this is bringing your fever back. I'll fix that shutter, will you, dear? Oh, bother the thing. The sooner I get you out of here and down to George's cottage, the... Bell. Traffic. Voices. As if the whole town was trying to speak to me. Try to get some sleep. I'll get you a pill. The silent voices. Those are the ones I want to hear. I'm 
sorry, the inspectress. Madame Rivo? Come in, madame. Hi. My name is... I know your husband is a very good doctor. I wanted to thank him, but he left rather hurriedly. Won't you sit down? You come about your sister, Francoise? Yes. She wasn't attacked. She invented it. How do you know? Anything to show herself off. Anything to display herself. Tearing her clothes, going half naked through the town, as if Jacques even noticed her. Didn't your husband mind when you brought her to his home? It was Mama who was begging me. She was quite happy with Mama in Bordeaux. She didn't have to come. That house in Bordeaux, not a very nice place for a young girl. As so. if she was so innocent. Why, even in Algiers, when we had our own house quite separate, we always knew what was going on, how the money was made. Was that where you met your husband in Algiers? She threw herself at him even there. Mm. Only 17. It was disgusting. But it was you he married. Wash my hands. I wash my hands. I've done all I can. Oh, Madame Rivo, I... Pestering him to let her drive the car in his rounds, always on the phone to him. She thinks I don't know. Well, I've had enough. I'm finished. I can't stand it anymore. <laughs> oh, how dreadful. What a dreadful situation. The silent voices. My dear, mm -hmm. how'd you like to go on a trip? Where to? To Bordeaux. I found it on the floor. There was one match left. Are you sure? Well, if there'd been more, I'd have put it in my pocket. Uh, are you sure you found it on the floor? Don't you believe me? Well, the curious thing is, I picked it up off the floor, the floor of a railway carriage, and I dropped it in the forest. Not because it was empty, but because of this. But you don't think I brought you down no, here? No, I don't think that you shot at me. But I think you know who did. And it wasn't the maniac. Ah, oh, if only I could remember. I got out of that train a station too soon. That weird old man in the compartment, he got out there too. Now, obviously, I was shot at by mistake. By someone who was expecting to meet who? The maniac. Someone who Francoise wants to protect. Now, that rules out Gaston and Fouché and yourself. So, the mayor and the doctor. Which was it, George? I know. You drink with them, you go fishing together, you play chess. They're your friend. All right, it doesn't matter. What train is that? The local from Bordeaux. Jules, if I tell you, if I swear to you that it's over, finished, There'll be no more incidents. What are you saying? That there no longer is any maniac? A taxi, I suppose we need a taxi here. Oh, there's something. Is that a taxi? Yes, I think it is. Taxi! I can't think what your husband's doing here, but it's a very pleasant spot. Are you free? But of course you are. I'll just take those things. Very dear to me, this spot. Because of my two daughters and Jacques. Oh, such a splendid fellow, such a clever doctor. So clever, just like your husband. Oh, I do so admire him, I can't wait to meet him. We want to go to the Hotel d'Angleterre, please. I've brought her, Madame Beausoleil. Entirely, but entirely, of endless kebabs, kebab, kebab. What's wrong? Every line. The face, the hands, the man himself. Not quite himself, I'm afraid. Madame. What a moment, what 
not a moment to be called to the great Maigret as summons. I was saying to Madame Maigret all the way, but all the way. You remember, my dear, I told you how yes, I collected... I'll go and see if they can make us some coffee. Coffee, good. Books upon books, cuttings, photographs, uh, every Lord, case, every for mention. Some... Forgive me, but my time is short. I knew it. Oh, I can see it. The aura, it's there. Huh? And you're not smoking your pipe. Oh, I'm glad to be able to tell you it's not as bad as you think. There's still time for a few questions. The police have always been very good friends of mine. One of my girls was found with a stolen wallet. Oh, I sent her away at once. But she made accusations. <laughs> well, I'm ready to answer any questions gladly. Well, now, it's your son-in-law I wanted to speak to you about. Tonton? Tonton. Tonton, where are you? So what do you call him? Tonton. It's his pet name. A good boy. Oh, I hope you've no complaint about your treatment. Uh, no, no, none at all. I just wondered why such an excellent doctor, a pupil of Martel, uh, should be stuck in a village like this. Well, uh, I was in Bordeaux. He wanted to be near me. <sighs> your younger daughter, Francoise, she lived with you? Yes, until Monsieur Drevet offered her this appointment. Mm, perhaps... Uh... Tonton wanted to be near Francoise. Oh, well, while she's working for Monsieur Trevet, I can't forbid her to lodge with her own sister. Francoise must have been very young when Germain got married. Seventeen. No more than that. Oh, it's a ripe old age nowadays. Oh, patron. <laughs> you must have been very surprised when the brilliant young doctor who you've all preferred your elder daughter. Oh, Tonton was very shy. Very brilliant young men often are. Germain was a woman. She hmm. understood him. What was he doing in Algiers? This all happened in Algiers, didn't it? Well, his father was in business there. When did he change his name? Change his name? Yes. Martel had no pupil named Rivo. Now, you agree that he studied under Martel, so now we have to know why he changed his name. He'd better tell me the whole thing, hadn't you? Oh, well. It was nothing he did, the boy. He used to come and visit his father, Samuel Tardou, a wealthy trader. Then, one day in my house, oh, it was dreadful, a dreadful thing. A girl was found dead. It was not an accident? No. Samuel Tardou was accused? Yes, there was an investigation. Germain was the only witness, monsieur, I ask you to understand. He married Germain to keep her quiet and to protect his father. Then he changed his name and came and settled here. What happened to the father? He lived with me. Oh, we never thought it would happen again. But it did? Yes. When did you last see Samuel Tardou? Three days ago. Did you say where he was going? Oh, I tried to keep an eye on him always. When he was himself, he was... He was such a harmless old man. Was such a harmless old man? You believe he's dead, no? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Mama. Oh, Jacques, Jacques, Jacques. Mama, what on earth are you doing here? I had to tell him I had to. It's all right, Mama. Is this a professional visit? Tonton? <laughs> Don't brain yourself, Mama. <laughs> How is the shoulder? No pain. Huh? Georges? Jules. They found the body. Fouché has just reported. Near the Moulin Neuf. An elderly man. I see. Three days. Georges, can you see if we can get a car around here? Thank you. I think they've found him. Madame Beausoleil, I'm afraid you'll have to go down and identify the body. My wife will go with you.
Why do you come back? Jacques? Jacques? What's happened? Jacques? Leave me alone, Jeremy. Jacques. Why do you want him? Leave him alone. I must see him. What are you doing? Let me go. He doesn't want you. It's me. He wants me. Me. Jacques! Jacques, they know. She's here. Mama's here. She's seen me, Great. Let me go. Jacques! Thank you, Fauché. No, there's nothing else. What could there be? Both of them in the woods behind the house. It was the same gun. Why? Because he knew that for him it was the end. But why? The madman was Rivo's father. You both knew that, didn't you? I knew. George guessed. I first found the clue in a certain house in Bordeaux. Little by little, I came to the truth. But by that time... Francoise. A lonely man is an easy victim. I shut my eyes. I accepted Rivo's assurances that with time and drugs, the disease would die out. He couldn't treat his father at home. They would meet in the woods. But the treatment failed and another woman died. Yes. So the brilliant young doctor was forced to use the final medicine. He put him down like a sick animal. What it must cost a man to execute his own father. 